Well, Jonathan, one of my first questions is just tell me all about this podcast with Kenyon Barner. It seems like it's going to be a great, great time. Yeah, you know, uh, me and Kenyon, great friends, um, obviously, you know, being running backs for the University of Oregon, you're basically in, uh, you know, I guess what you would call it a, um, I don't know, a little bit of a fraternity, a brotherly uh, fraternity. Um, so him getting drafted to the Carolina Panthers um, rookie year, uh, it was a real cool opportunity for me to really, you know, bond with him and and just kind of be a big brother from for, for a little bit um, in his career. It's just been amazing to see him flourish. Um, and, and now us being retired into the, you know, the business world, family man, um, being able to, you know, connect on a level post-career and talk about football, talk about life, you know, bring, you know, old teammates, whether they're duck related or not, um, into the mix and, you know, share stories, uh, give, you know, listeners inside view from our perspective of what life was like in the NFL, what life was like, you know, in the Pac-12 and just our lives in general. Um, so I just think it's a really cool opportunity for uh, tuners to tune in and, you know, get to know us and get to know, you know, the life of football. Absolutely. And I was talking to Kenyon earlier today, and he said he met you on his official visit at Dennis Dixon's house. Do you remember that yeah. encounter with him? I briefly remember that 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 encounter. Because, I mean, obviously, too, there's, you know, the big games of the of the year. Those are the, the ones that you're getting your top heavy recruits coming in for a visit because, of course, everyone wants to watch the USC games, want, want to watch the, the Oregon State games, the UW games. That means so much. And, and, and being able to, you know, see what college atmosphere is all about through those types of games. Um, and so, obviously, Kenyon being, you know, highly touted coming out of California, uh, you, you as a running back, you're, you, you always got eyes on who's being recruited. Let's put it that way. Absolutely. He actually did say that in the first exchange you had with him, you said, oh, so you're coming for my spot, which I thought was <laughs> hilarious. It was amazing. And from 1936 to 2007, when you were drafted, you were the 13th first round pick for University of Oregon. That's kind of changed a lot in the last couple of years with the last five years, all having first round draft picks for the Ducks. How do you kind of see that kind of explosion of talent that has come in to University of Oregon that has really translated to the pros. Yeah, during the time that I was getting recruited, um, it was during the Joey Harrington era, right? And so you got to pay homage to, you know, history and, and just who the Ducks became through the innovation of Nike, through the innovation and free spirit of, of guys like Tinker. And, um, and, and obviously, you know, it's just an opportunity for now to basically recreate that momentum. And I see, you know, Big Ten as that opportunity as basically, hey, world, we want you to see Oregon for what Oregon has to offer. And it was almost the same kind of, you know, ceremony when, you know, the Joey Heisman thing came about. And it was basically an opportunity for Oregon to stand on, you know, an opportunity, which was Joey playing lights out and tapping into different markets of the world. And I say the world because you have Nike going and putting their brand of a college team on the billboards in Times Square. So you get literally the world coming through New York during that time and getting, you know, what Oregon has to offer. And so now this is that, this is just a reoccurring opportunity for, um, Oregon to just, uh, you know, make a statement. It's just a good part. It's a good time to be a part of, you know, you know, athletics and, and college. Um, Cause I just think that we're in, we're in an interesting time.
We absolutely yeah. are. And it's a time that has really been influenced by you and your time at the University of Oregon, specifically your track capabilities. You did the 60 meter dash when you were with Oregon Track and Field. And in the latest That Team Out West episode from the University of Oregon covering fall camp, they talked about really how running backs have to be track athletes when it comes to the University of Oregon. How do you reflect on that? Because I think that you were really one of the first to bring that kind of skill set to University of Oregon. Yeah. Um, you know, there's always been speed, in my opinion, when you t talk about the University of Oregon. Um, Tara Smith, you know, like was, I think, in my opinion, one of the first natural breeders of a runner, you know, as far as speed and, and the ability to not just have speed, but have the size to run over someone and the explosion in that type of, you know, running back to where he can take it the distance no matter where he is on the field. But for myself, it's a pretty cool, you know, opportunity to just to be a part of that. Um, you know, I think coming out, no one's really seen during that time a running back my size, um, being able to run the way I was and being knocked off my feet and catching balance and, and all those types of things. And then get to college, have to figure out how to run through injuries and all those types of things. And, but still finding um, ways to be effective. And I think that's really kind of the the spirit of Oregon is you got guys that have played through countless amounts of injuries. You know, you look at LaMichael James and everything that he endured in, in his time playing. You look at the physicality of LeGarrette Blount. You look at, you know, Jeremiah Johnson, who, you know, right now I'm just thinking to myself, Oregon – you want to get a sound bite, Oregon could be possibly the the last and and final uh RB running back university. Um because right now it's all about speed. And I feel like, you know, but you have to have that delivery of size and speed. And I just think that we've been able to really um, you know, get some points there in the when it comes to recruiting and getting guys in the backfield that have, you know, the total package. You look at Jordan James now, he's amazing. Total package. Can take one to the distance. And when he gets in the game, when I saw him last year, it was a change of pace um, when he got the ball. Um, not that Bucky Irving wasn't effective. It was just a different type of runner. And I, I'm really looking forward to seeing him this year and just kind of keeping that going. And one of the things I wanted to ask you about, uh, I called my dad, who is the guy who got me into Oregon football, and he has had season tickets for literally more than I've been born. So he knows he he had a lot of questions for you as well. Um, and one of them was around 2007 when you beat Michigan in Ann Arbor. Uh, now, the Ducks are playing Michigan in Ann Arbor this year. Uh, what advice do you have for them uh, going back into some enemy territory? Um. You know, you can't recreate, you know, that experience, um, you know, but all I know is the advice I would give is, you know, make your own memories and make it memorable. Um, you know, you're, you're get, you get an opportunity of a lifetime to be able to be a part of history when it comes to college football in general, going to the big 10, you know, you ask anyone 50 years ago, would that happen 30 years ago? Would that happen? they would say no chance, right? And so this is an opportunity to really kind of like for Oregon to go into the Big Ten and really ruffle some feathers. No pun intended. A hundred percent. And also during that game, 2007 was when Coach Chip Kelly became the offensive coordinator at Oregon. And during that game in Ann Arbor was when the Statue of Liberty play was run and then fake run for a touchdown. Now Chip Kelly is at Ohio State. Of course, we know that October 12th game is looming. Everybody has it circled on their calendar. What is your perspective with Chip now going and coaching for the Buckeyes? Um, I think it's it's fitting. It's, you know, I think he's gone through a phase in his life where he's tried some things and he's, you know, been dominant in things and he's had some hardships. And I think it's kind of like a full circle moment for him of knowing exactly where he is in coaching. And um, 
that's a dangerous place for a lot of people to have to face him because he doesn't have to question anything about what he's doing. He knows what he's where he wants to be and where he chooses to be, which is calling plays. So Chip Kelly, with that much time and that type of energy, not chasing anything besides wins and drawing things up that no one's ever seen before, that's dangerous. And walk me through, if you can, of what you remember from that Statue of Liberty play, the first one before the fake, kind of how was that put together? Uh, what was going through your mind when that was happening? Because that really is one of the first, like, iconic changes of University of Oregon's offense. Yeah, those are plays that you've got to see on movies, um, backyard football, and you're like, that will never work in a game, maybe like a high school game. But, you know, on the national level like that, the guts to you know go into Ann Arbor and, and call that play, it, it was a testament to who we really were. And just the amount of trust he had had in his his players, um, we were prepared. Uh, we ran that play all like every practice, just about. And we just and it was just always like, "Hey, practice like you're gonna run it. You never know when you'll have to run it." And sometimes with those plays, you can get goofy and just kind of you know go through the motions and and whatnot. But he called that play and it worked to perfection. And another thing Kenyon and I were talking about earlier that I think you might be able to talk to is kind of the uh, attitude towards alumnus uh, when it comes to former coaching regimes now into the Lanning coaching regime. Lanning is very, very involved in getting alumni involved with the guys, involved with the team, having guest coaches at the spring game. How do you feel about kind of what's been going on when it comes to alumni relations under the Lanning era? Yeah, I think it's awesome. He gets it. At the end of the day, he just gets it. And I think also, too, he's probably, you know, this generation, my generation, we're the same age, technically. So he he gets it. That's really all I can say. Um, but I will say, you know, the reason why also is it's it's a, it's a, it's a history thing, right? You can't really go forward without knowing where you came, you know? And so being able to have that piece of history you know, not just in monuments and pictures, but in flesh and blood that gets to show up to practices, that gets to come for pregame. Those youngsters in those chairs that have a game the next day are going to be able to look to the side and see a Marcus Mario, to see a Jonathan Stewart, see a LeGarrette Blount, see a Hello Tinata, see Kellen Clemens and Joey Harrington's and, and be even more, um, you know, inspired to go out and play and and that's how you really create you know a good organization and a legacy by you know remembering that yeah but he also does a really good job of having his mind set forward and the vision and the plan and the execution is always about how are we going to be innovative how are we going to be the best team on the football field Hundred percent. And tell me a little bit about what you're doing now. Of course, I did some research and saw that you were a CW host. But what is life after football for you? Um. So I, me and my wife, do a TV show, um, in in Charlotte, and it's called Lately, and we basically showcase local businesses, um, and tell their stories and and how they give back to the community, and so just kind of one of those TV shows to inspire people to be mindful uh, in where their time spent and um, and just keeping the main thing, the main thing. And then, um, yeah, I get, got a digital marketing agency you know, based out of Charlotte and, and in San Diego. Um, do a lot of real estate stuff now. Um, got into real estate through my passive investments while I played. So a little bit of that private equity stuff venture capital investing, just a lot. And I'm also coaching now too. So coaching uh, uh, middle school football with some t some old teammates of mine. And um, yeah, and I got two daughters and I'm married and I like to golf frequently. Golf, <laughs> all right, all right. Good to know, good to know. Diversified. Obviously. Yeah. We'd love to see it. And what uh, Oregon teammates do you catch up with the most, if any? 
Um, I would say um, Kenyon, um, JJ, LeGarrett, uh, LeMichael. We actually all have a group text um, that uh, somebody put us on. You remember who put us on the group text? I think it was, uh, I have no clue, but um, but we're all on a group text and we text about, you know, weekly or biweekly, everybody just staying in touch, which is uh, really awesome. Who replies then, the most in this group chat? Maybe JJ. Okay. I don't know. Okay. Okay. Jeremiah. Cool, cool, cool. Um, Just wondering. Yeah. Um, and I also wanted to know uh, who is your ideal podcast guest? Because this is a lot of alumnus that you guys are bringing in. This is a lot of highlighting Oregon's history. So, what Oregon, uh, Oregon athlete, past, present, future, or Oregon member would you like to have on the podcast the most? Um, most, man, that's a good question. I mean, Kenyon, that's why I'm doing it. (laughs) (laughs) Do you have any questions you really want to ask Kenyon during this podcast? Uh, there's probably really nothing that I don't know. So it'll be a lot of storytelling, storytelling. I'm excited. I'm excited. There's (laughs) going to be a lot of good stories to be told. Well, thank you so, so much, Jonathan, for talking with me. It has been amazing. Um, And one more question, because I forgot to ask you this. What are your thoughts on this upcoming season? I've heard your thoughts sprinkled in here and in there, but what are your thoughts on the 2024 season for the Oregon Ducks? Um, I really think that we have a shot. You know, I think a lot of people think we have a shot too. And, you know, I just, you know, I just the reason the reasoning behind it is coaching, um, leadership, going into a new um, environment. You got to have the right leadership for it. And a lot of people might, you know, look at that situation and run from it. And I think everything that that, you know, Dan stands for um, and how he leads and how he treats people. Um, everything that they've gone through this off season, um, you know, he's, he's gotten, he's got an ability to really get guys going. So the big 10 is definitely going to be shocked. <laughs> in my opinion. And one more thing, when you were playing at university of Oregon, it was still the pac 10. Uh, so how do you reflect on this kind of regional conference, not existing as much anymore? Um, at first I was shocked. I was like, oh man, this is, uh, this is different. I don't know how I feel about it. But then I went to sleep and then woke up the next day and was like, oh, it makes all the sense in the world. It was going to happen eventually. But, you know, this is what happens in history. You go back and you look at how conferences became, how divisions became. There's addition, there's subtraction. And right now we're in multiplication. (laughs) We're in bringing everybody together. Yeah. Super conferences, if you will. Well, well, Jonathan Stewart, thank you so, so much for joining me today. If you would like to check out his and Kenyon's podcast for Division Street and Ducks of a Feather, please check it out wherever you can stream podcasts. That is Apple, Spotify, the whole gamut. Jonathan, thank you very much for joining me. All right. Thank you.